On average, smokers die 13 to 14 years earlier than non-smokers. Tobacco smoking is estimated to be responsible for more than a quarter of cancer deaths in the UK. That is around 43,000 deaths in 2009. Around 86% of lung cancer deaths in the UK are caused by tobacco smoking. In this documentary, we will explore the effects of nicotine in the body and the help available for those who want to quit. Obviously, you know, the, in a cigarette there's 4,000 chemicals which have a lot of like cancer causing chemicals but the main thing is the COPD which causes your inflammation to your, your tubes going down and affects your breathing, stops you, you know, doing walking at the end of it when you, you, you know, when your COPD is really, really bad at the stop, you're getting from bed to chair because you can't breathe and they end up on oxygen and that's the most, you know, the, the most common thing that smoking actually causes. Well, if you use nicotine replacement and attend like a, a drop in or a one to one session with the uh, advisor, you're four times more likely to quit smoking to start with. Um, but you, at that session, you have to look at the individual. You have to decide what's best for them. Some people, you know, can't use patches if they've got you know um, skin problems. Um, Pregnant ladies can't use the Champix, which is the tablet that you take that if you know affects your nerve receptors and your brain coats them. Um, so you've got to look at everybody as an individual. Some people don't like putting things in their mouth, like the the chewing gum. Some people can chew chewing gum all the time. It just varies really. I mean, the research, if you look at research, research does show that Champix has a higher success rate overall. But you know, as a, as I say, it's an, it's individual choice really. Smoking is known to be heavily influenced by social factors. We went to the Stella in Washington to find people's opinions on alcohol-induced smoking and social smoking. Usually when my friends go out for a tab, I'll uh, just follow suit and go out for one, even if I don't really need one. I've tried quitting twice. Once I've tried to go cold turkey and once I've tried with the uh, patches, both times I've just failed. Usually after I've had a drink, I will smoke a lot more. Like at least two or three times the amount that I'd usually smoke. <laughs> I'll probably say around about November, but to be honest, I have, since then I've had me like odd ones when I haven't been sober and I'd smoke and I, just because other people are and I'm on breaks at work and stuff, so it's always something to do. And that completely cold turkey, completely. Just, just so I, can know, I knew that I could do it in my own, in my own head. I've had a few pints tonight, and I've already had one tab. Uh, I like smoke when I'm drinking, now, definitely. Research shows that most smokers get motivated to quit very suddenly, spurred into action by a specific event, milestone or resolution. Around 7 million smokers will make a New Year's resolution to improve an aspect of their health, and one of the most common ones is to stop smoking. There is now a wide variety of nicotine replacement treatments and therapy sessions supplied by the NHS to help people stop smoking. It may be quite a difficult task, but achieving the quit will allow you to enjoy food more, reduce the chance of your children smoking, and you may even find that you are approached more by potential new friends and partners when out socialising. A lot of smokers will already know this information, but still continue to smoke, either because they enjoy it too much, or they just can't manage to overcome the craving for nicotine. If you want to make a difference, do it today, throw it away.